Welcome to another Clean Room video and this week's theme is all about particles. Let's go and have a look. Okay, so in this week's video we're going to have a look at people and particles and some of the risks that emanate from different activities within the clean room environment. Um, so the first thing is, is that the number of particles that come from our body is affected by a number of factors. So there's like plumes, which are like the, the way the air curves around us, which can be a factor. But also the speed at which we walk at. And this is something that's been established since the 1960s in relation to clean rooms. So the fewer movements we take and the slower and more controlled those movements are, then the lower the particle deposition rate. And you can see on the, the slide, there's a figure of a typical clean room person doing different activities. And then in the table, we've got um, different particle generations from different speeds of walking, starting from motionless, a classic clean room pose, through to um, the slow, deliberate levels of walking. And you can see that actually, if we were to run up and down the corridor, then the number of particles we'd be producing would be quite substantial. Um, also, we generate a number of particles from our mouth and nose in the form of visible droplets, as you know when sometimes you sneeze, and a lot of sub-visible droplets as well, which is why mask control is important. But you can see that the act of sneezing produces about a million particles of around just under 40,000 that are considered to be uh, microbial. Coughing about 5,000 particles, around 700 of those are microorganisms. And also then with the level at which we talk cats as well can be quite influential. And there's a really fascinating study that I was reading about yesterday um, to do with talking and the number of particles that are produced. And the number of particles produced correlates with voice levels. So this can raise between 1 and 50 particles per second, depending on how loudly we are speaking. And this study looked at people talking in different languages and found out it didn't actually make any, any difference. But that's kind of interesting in that the way we express ourselves is actually correlating to the number of particles um, we're producing. Um, now, also with particles, there are other factors to consider as well and this is due to makeup so let me just go and um, quickly get changed obviously one of the concerns about going into clean rooms is makeup um, which can be men or women most commonly women but just to show that um, in the spirit of things if I was wearing makeup I would be a risk to the clean room so for example if somebody I was wearing lipstick gosh that would be really strange you know that would be a lot of particles also with some uh, blusher, that would also not be too good. If I also had eyeliner on, then who knows what might happen. And eyeshadow as well. Oh, that was <laughs> rather strange. A um, bit too much foundation and uh, even false eyelashes. So it's an example of um, if I did look like this, I would be a particular risk going into the clean room due to the amount of particles that would be coming off the, the makeup. And that's just too strange, so I think they changed. Well, I'm very pleased to be back with you in slightly more of a normal state. But anyway, you can see from the various uh, makeup elements that lipstick you know, would produce millions of particles, as would rouging, powder, eyeshadow, but number one is mascara. So this is why there's a zero makeup allowed in clean rooms and a zero tolerance approach to the contamination risks that makeup presents. And also the importance of face masks to kind of capture all of those kind of breathing elements that I've spoken about. Um, so it's always important, as you've seen in other videos, to have the mask worn tightly and for the mask to be changed um, worn for no more than four hours because of the moisture build up and it just starts decreasing the mask efficiency. OK, so that brings this video um, to an end. So we had a bit look at particles and the, particularly the particles that are generated from ourselves as people. 
So hopefully um, that's been of some interest. And um, until next time, goodbye. Oh, and remember, it's really important to try and minimise the number of particles that we're producing. Cheerio.